I don't buy this claim of quantum consciousness. I don't particularly think that quantum phenomena are uh, important for how we humans achieve our high level cognition. I, I think the human brain is basically too noisy to really take advantage of quantum superpositions. If he were right about that, then uh, what would have to be assumed in order for the simulation argument still to hold would be that at technological maturity, you were able to construct extremely powerful quantum computers such that uh, you would be able to make a lot of simulations of minds in the future, even though each of those minds that you would have to simulate would require harnessing quantum computation. If the human mind naturally evolved to take advantage of those quantum phenomena, then presumably a technologically mature civilization could also take advantage of those phenomena and probably do it on a larger scale or at least with great parallelism. So that if I had to guess, it would still be feasible to create astronomical numbers of human-like experiences, even under those assumptions. But as I said, I don't buy the assumptions. Is a quantum computer really the ultimate evolution uh, that's necessary in any way for to unlock the simulation uh, arguments? Uh, no, no, I don't think it's necessary either for the simulation argument or for developing machine superintelligence. I think if we really got quantum computers to work, they would accelerate uh, certain types of computation that would be useful, for example, as you said, for simulating quantum systems, also for cracking certain cryptographic codes, mm -hmm. and no doubt people would find other uses for them. Possibly some uses that might be helpful for developing artificial general intelligence, although it's not completely clear how, but it's not needed. In fact, if we look at the current main types of algorithms that are used in machine learning, they are quite insensitive to uh, precision and a very sort of digital approach seems to work very well. Initially, people were using 32 or 64 bit floating numbers to represent the parameters of these large mm -hmm. neural networks. Turns out that's overkill and you don't need that kind of precision. Mm -hmm. 16 bit numbers are perfectly fine and you can discretize things quite a lot and it still works. You save a bunch of computing power and you don't really lose that much in performance. And to me, the human mind also looks like a system which has to be robust to noise. It can't be too fuzzy about the 10th decimal <laughs> in some particular setting in some neuron because like biological systems are noisy. Things wiggle around all the time. Sometimes you do exercise and you heat up by one degree and then you, mm -hmm. you, you can't rely on those excessively fine gradations, I think. And so that kind of forces you to use a slightly more robust paradigm where exactly where you carve up the bits doesn't really, it's not critical for the functionality. My wife has a question, which is, um, if the simulation argument is correct, why are there so many Kardashians? Well, I wouldn't there be. <laughs> I guess it's it's like these, you know, people that like Shirley MacLaine here. Yeah. People always think that they they had they're reincarnated, but they're always like super interesting backstories, you know, that they were the uh, maid of Marie Antoinette or something. You know, it's never like I was uh, one of the guys who who put the axles on some wheel that that uh, ran off a donkey cart putting a pyramid block in place, you know, 2,900. Anyway, um, I guess it's the the bias towards, um, uh, towards you know, kind of people thinking of themselves with with more importance. I mean, putting a kind of the similarity bias, so to speak. But, and I'll, uh, that was just a joke, really. But but in seriousness, um, there is... But you, uh, but you could ask as, as sort of related, and so you could ask, is the human history that we uh, observe more or less interesting than you would expect a typical history of some human-like intelligent species to be on some random planet where, that were human-like creatures. Like, do you think on most planets, things would just be a lot more boring or are we right. sort of in the middle of the distribution? I mean, if, if I, I, I don't know that there is anything particularly suspect if we just look at how things, I mean, it might be kind of a little bit surprising that life evolved at all and stuff like that, but once you get to to the rise of Homo sapiens, then 
and I, it, it doesn't seem that there's this amazing sequence of coincidences within the past few thousand years that are just like that looks astronomically unlikely unless somebody rigged it to be like that. It doesn't, I mean, it's, it's as far as we can tell, like to be pretty typical, right? Of what one would expect given the start. Yeah. Point. I mean, given the uncertainty in the prior distribution, given that we only have one example 